start with the our two, one's a frat and the other one? The oot. The oot. I can never tell the difference between them. <laughs> and you're the genetics expert. And I'm the genetics expert. I have a, a bigger problem. I have twin granddaughters that I can't tell the difference. Oh, come on. So every time they come over, I wait until somebody says, <laughs> and then I try to remember what color shoes they have. <laughs> we won't tell them. <laughs> Okay, Ruth. So, um, so speak loudly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just finished my PhD in the Weizmann Institute. Please speak a little bit louder. I just finished my PhD in Weizmann yes. Institute, and it's been a wonderful experience. And in a month and a half, I'm leaving for uh, the Broad Institute of Harvard and MIT uh, in Boston. Uh, to do a postdoc studying uh, aging and uh, neurodegenerative diseases. This is just for you. She's going to study aging. <laughs> um, a neurobiologist. You can, can advise her. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you probably in a month. Not in th three years. <laughs> 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 Another way to put it. <laughs> and, uh, so I do neurobiology, brain research, and now I'm a, I, what I did for my PhD, I studied memory, um, mostly, and it's been an amazing experience for me. This is one and of the... What is one of the things about the program, Marcel? Yes. That a lot of the a lot of the students are not doing are into the more advanced type of studies. In other words, studies like this, you know, brain type studies, memory, aging. This is all new age studies. You know, this is the future, and uh, a lot of our a lot of our fellows, right? are really breaking ground. They're going into brand new things that were never done before. And it was a good example of that. They become pioneers. They're pioneers, exactly. You know that uh, Marcel was a pioneer here in Israel. For those of you who didn't know that. <laughs> you want to tell just a little bit about? I can tell them. But I think it's annoying to hear stuff of my beginning when they are already in fifth <laughs> steps ahead. <laughs> Maybe you're right. <laughs> but since you opened the <laughs> so <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I dreamt a lot before I was liberated from my regular life by running away in the middle of the Holocaust and reaching Istanbul. From Romania? I was born in Romania. And uh, I was one of six children. Romania was not as harshly treated because, the, well, I entered into history. The <coughs> Nazis, our protectors, needed the oil of Romania needed the passage through Romania to go to Russia. I'm talking when I was 18, 19 years old, and I didn't know anything about it. I dreamt also about Israel. I was, I became a Harut, so entered in a group and trying to learn how to plant a flower or a tree. And eventually, 
the following three years was, I better don't tell you, because I would spoil your day. <laughs> so that is my beginning. And uh, eventually, like others, I got married two, three years after I was visiting the United States. And uh, in the United States, I thought to learn a little bit about the States before I come back here. And my friends told me the, a war started in the Middle East, and the war is in a country, what's the name of the, Korea. The Korean conflict. They will love to have you there in the army if you want to volunteer. They need, <clears throat> I was 19 years old, 20 years, and they will, if you volunteer to enter the army, they will send you there. They needed manpower. And uh, your chances to come back are very small. But why don't you go to Canada, which is eventually the same visit the same systems which I did and eventually I remain. Unlike today, I didn't have a state of Israel to come back and to profess and to advance and to learn what is important. Like you were blessed being in the right time. Well, I look much older than you, but let's not talk about age. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so I'm Sarah Kaplan. Research in Weizmann Institute. Yes. And I think that it's been wonderful to be part of this program. Yes. Because uh, it really supports interactions between different fields. And I think that for us it was really helpful to our research and to meet all the other um, fellows of Adams. And also, uh, I think another great thing about the program is that it supports. Um, it, it gives you financial support to go to conferences in your area and really meet the leaders of the field and talk to them and it gives you many good ideas about the kind of research that um, you can do back in the lab. I think it's, it's really extremely important. So I would really like to thank you for giving us this uh, opportunity and we hope to um, we hope to continue uh, our studies abroad and uh, to come back to Israel and to really contribute uh, to science and ho hopefully it will translate into um, contribution to human health. And Fantastic. <laughs> Israel needs you. Yeah, we, we definitely In my time there that. was no Israel. <laughs> So the only choice I had is to hide. And you do it on the, in the open and then in advance and lead. And bravo. Marcel, she, and the frat pointed out one, I think one of the most important aspects of the program is the support for going to conferences. Travel. The travel. travel. And uh, I just came back from a conference in Italy, <coughs> which was supported and 
by your, your fellowship program. It's a very, very important thing because you know, even though Israel is a, is, a, is a leader in many fields of science, interactions with other scientists is very, very important. And through the program, they learn to do this at a very early stage, which is really, really excellent. It's a, it's a wonderful part of the program. I don't touch the details because I will not understand what you are talking about. You don't want to understand because she works on cancer. You don't want to know about this. No, no, no. Leave it alone. Right. Now, Guy is, just took up a position at Hebrew University in the Department of Physics. And, and he's uh, one of our first people to actually finish the whole program, everything, and come back and take up a position here. Guy, I actually took up the position about a year ago. I've been here already for, for a year by now. Um, I graduated... In the th third. Third, third. Yeah, so I graduated in 2009. I was actually in Adam's Hall, I think, for about a year and a half, pretty much. Um, I graduated in uh, 2009, and then I did uh, my postdoc work at uh, Morris Berkeley National Lab, which is affiliated with uh, UC Berkeley. <laughs> LBL, which is uh, affiliated with uh, UC Berkeley. Actually, my, the group I worked with was, uh, had a, a professor there had a, had a joint appointment. Um, it's it's truly I've been I've been fortunate uh, to be able to do a lot of different types of research. My main my main field of research is actually nuclear physics, which is uh, in fact sorely lacking in Israel, but uh, that's a completely separate issue. But um, I've been fortunate to be able to do a lot of different types of research in that field. Um, and I, I, have, I do have to second what Afrat said about, the, uh, about travel. Um, one of the issues is that uh, typically the, the grants our are, 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 you know, thesis advisors have usually don't allow them to fund a lot of, a lot of conference travel um, just, just because of the way the grants are structured. And it's, it's, it's very enabling. To be to have this this independence to be able to independently find the, the what interests you and in, in, in travel here without having to go through the formal process and uh, it's it really does let you interact with you know with the top people in your field and uh, certainly um, certainly the, the the fellowship is is a wonderful addition to any uh, to any resume and uh, I. I I can certainly say that it helped me out a lot. Um, it's, it's, it's certainly a, a good thing, and I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. You say, are there, is there anything that you think we can do to improve the, fellowship? the fellowships? Yes. Good. Um, well. <laughs> and, and this may be a bit. Don't have to be this may be a bit self-defeating since I'm a nuclear physicist, but um, personally, I think this fellowship should also also be open to uh, social science PhDs. And um, one of the reasons I think is that um, from talking, I actually collaborate with um, social scientists. I've, I've written more than one paper with uh, with people from the social sciences, even though I do nuclear physics. And what I find is that um, typically the, the PhD students in those fields are not as well supported as the as the hard science PhD students. And that's just because of the way the grants, it's, it's much harder for PIs to obtain grants in social sciences. So a lot of them are not even, are either either only get tuition or, or maybe get a small stipend. And, and this fellowship, I think, could be even more enabling for those students because that will give them even, even more independence than it gives us. Because it, it's very rare to find a, a, a student in, in, the, in the sciences that is not supported in any way. But it's it's very common to find such a student in in the um, liberal arts or social sciences, and I think that would be a wonderful addition to this program. Marcel, do you think that uh, is a, do you think that it's worthwhile to expand the program to include the social sciences? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The more, the better. <laughs> and Hebrew University is probably very happy to receive you. I would hope so. <laughs> and, and pave the road 
for you to help them. I, I, let me put things into perspective because it's very, very difficult to get an academic position in Israel. And only the very, 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 very best get accepted and they're very rare. And so if somebody has a new position at the Hebrew University, you can be sure that he's excellent. But it's not easy. Well, Hebrew University, sometimes the ideal position one can aim and go, and if you are accepted, I cannot say anything which will but back their decision. Bravo. <laughs> Good. Um, Nathan Kelly just joined us. Nathan, you, you sort of missed what we were doing, but we, everybody has sort of told something about their experiences and about what they're, what they're doing. So as a, one of the Batikin, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about your experience with the Adams Fellowship. But do it with the microphone. <laughs> yeah. There's one here, so is there two more? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Again, please, what is your name? My name is Nathan Keller. Yeah. First class. Yes, I was uh, in first class, but I was the only one who was uh, married at that time. If you may remember, at the first meeting, I was the only one who came with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, several years, uh, every time if I met Mr. Adams, he said, Ah, you are the one who was married. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now uh, I think that seven years passed, so uh, Mr. Adams shouldn't remember it. Uh, there have been a lot of weddings since uh, There have been a lot of weddings since then. Uh, and so I'm sorry that I uh, came late. Uh, so what, uh, what I, can I tell? So I, I was uh, one of the first year of the, of the program, and then I finished the PhD two and a half years ago. And uh, for many family reasons, I uh, couldn't go abroad for a postdoc. We have uh, six small children, so it was a bit uh, hard to do it. Uh, so I. Uh, <coughs> So I remained in Israel and I went to, uh, I did my PhD in the Hebrew University and then I to, went to a postdoc in the Weizen Institute. And uh, now I started a position at the Babylon University as a mathematics department, as a faculty member. Um, what's, your, what's your field in mathematics? Uh, so I, I work in two fields. I, uh, I work in uh, combinatorics. And, uh, and I work in cryptography. And that one of the one of the talks at the Adams seminar uh, was a talk of Professor Adi Shamir, I think, two years ago. And then he talked about uh, a work which was joined with me. Uh, so I, I so I'm uh, working with uh, with Adi Shamir, and I'm working with uh, in combinatorics. I was student of. Uh, Maybe Professor Sidham knows him because... I know, you uh, got a prize to Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I was uh, uh, several weeks ago in the award ceremony of the Rothschild Prize when my advisor, Professor Kalai, got the prize together with Professor Sidham. Uh, so these are the two fields I, I work in. And uh, I think that's quite rare to, to get a position in the in the academia in Israel if you didn't go to the postdoc abroad. Almost unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that in mathematics uh, I know about one, per, one person in the last 15 years who did it. And uh, I think that uh, it, it can be that uh, one of the reasons why uh, I could get position is that uh, I'm I was considered as uh, a member in some distinguished group of uh, Adams Fellows. I think that uh, the Adams Fellowship is recognized today as uh, maybe the, the strongest fellowship in Israel uh, for, for PhD students. And I think that uh, the fact that uh, someone uh, belongs to this uh, distinguished group uh, uh, really helps him in the future. It, it surely is not uh, the only reason I had. Uh, I had to have uh, good results uh, 
of course, uh, also, but I think that uh, so this fact re really helps. And um, actually, I try to think, uh, but Sheva wrote uh, after we will, uh, that we will be supposed to, to talk here about what uh, what are my experience from the program and what uh, what can I suggest to improve. And actually, after thinking for a while, I uh, couldn't come up with uh, some <laughs> improvements. I can I can say which are in my uh, in my opinion, the strong points of the program, which are uh, important uh, uh, that, that they will uh, remain, I think that one very strong point is that the, pro <coughs> the program starts in an early uh, phase of the, of the PhD studies. I think that other uh, programs, like the CLO program and other programs, uh, start only after uh, the PhD program is approved which means in the Hebrew University only at the fourth year of the PhD. And then a student gets a fellowship for three years, starting with the fourth year of the PhD. But actually, anyone who wants to, to do real career has to finish his PhD after four years and to, to go to further studies. So actually, he can use the fellowship only for, for, for one year, and uh, during most of the PhD studies, you, he has to find uh, some other way to, to fund himself, which is, uh, today actually it is a bit easier. Today the, the stipends, at least in the Hebrew University and uh, in White are better. When, uh, when I received the Adams Fellowship, it was uh, after one year of my PhD uh, studies. And then we talked about my, uh, with my wife that uh, we do not have enough, uh, enough money for us because uh, she was a student and I was a PhD student and the stipend was about 4,000 uh, shekels uh, per month. So we said that, okay, I will have to go to work. And then I uh, received the uh, Adam Fellowship and I could uh, cont continue the study. So for us it, were, it was really, really crucial at that, at that uh, stage. So, so today it seems that the situation is a bit better, but uh, well, not uh, much. And the fact that the fellowship starts uh, early really helps, uh, helps very much. So this is one point. Another point, I think it's uh, this uh, Adam's seminar. I think that it is a, it is a nice uh, thing which, uh, which happens. I think that in other programs, uh, there is no such event. And then uh, actually, the only thing you do in the program is that uh, you receive some money. It's okay, this is, uh, this is all. And here, uh, it really helps to establish some uh, some community of, uh, of members wh which are, uh, uh, some of them know each other and even can maybe work together. I, I didn't start any collaboration out of this uh, seminar, but I think that there were people uh, with whom I, I talked about uh, some scientific uh, topics and, uh, and uh, today I think that I, I still can follow the, the research and see when they give uh, seminar talks, I say, ah, yes, I know him from others. <laughs> this is, uh, I think that this really helps. Maybe one point which, can, which we can try to do, I know that in the excellence program of the Technion it is done, excellence program of the Technion is for first degree students. They maintain some uh, community of uh, all the graduates and then uh, they write emails, for example, if some graduate uh, uh, wants to recruate uh, other graduates to his, uh, to his uh, startup company, then he, he writes a mail, a mail to all the members and uh, he writes actually the, the mail to the coordinator and then it is followed and all, and I think that it helps. Maybe in PhD it is uh, harder to do it uh, than in, in uh, first degree because in first degree the people are uh, still more open to, to other uh, to some options here, we already finish our PhD and uh, everyone uh, tries to get positions so it's hard, and, but maybe one can try to do it also. So, uh, but I, I again want to say that, uh, that the seminars, uh, I, I think that, that they are good and helpful. And for me personally, I have to say that I, uh, <coughs> I just enjoy to, to see Mr. Adams uh, every year in the seminar <laughs> and, uh, and to, uh, to think that uh, I would wish that when I will be about 90 years old, I will be able to be so, uh, <coughs> so lively and so uh, full of action. <laughs>
And so this is, I have uh, many to say good things, and I couldn't uh, actually think of, uh, of, our, of uh, improvements to suggest. Uh, this is a, a, what um, uh, Nathan brought up, the, the idea you know, that we have these seminars, we get together, all of the, all the different students together has been very successful because it generates a lot of interaction with the students. And also, in general, when you, when you do science, science isn't all work. It's also, it's also the, and the um, community feeling of science is very important. And this fosters that. I think it's a very important part of the program. Uh, we've heard what, what Nathan said. We've heard from other people as well. I think it's a, it's a good part of the program. Is there any uh, session, uh, liaison between one leaving Hebrew and the other one replacing? <laughs> Could be. Cons <laughs> conservation. Yes, <laughs> conservation. <laughs> anyway, that's life. <laughs> I am certain that each made independently choices and uh, tomorrow it will only translate that to two further successful youngsters. But it, we happened, tried, it happened that we got Hebrew and Hebrew, living in comic. You know that when we, when we, the students apply, when the students apply for the fellowship, so they come, all come from different universities in Israel. But the committee doesn't take that into consideration. The committee only takes into consideration excellence. Yeah. That's the only consideration. But, it's but, so in the end, but in the end, it turns out that all of the universities are represented anyhow, even though we don't take that into consideration. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> there is no, but it happens all. It happens by itself. Uh, Daphna works at the medical school. She, <coughs> she works on the immune system. Mm -hmm. And uh, she actually, she's done some, I mean, I'm sure everybody's done wonderful work, but I happen to know about Daphna's work, so. <laughs> And she's really done wonderful, wonderful work in the lab. Um, and you've been into the, in the program for two years now? Um, this is going to be my second. Second. Yeah, yeah no, you came first. first. You yeah. was a year before. Are you all yeah, first? I'm finishing You're my first year. Right. Okay. You yes. was less than the sixth class, and <coughs> that is the seventh class. Yeah, uh, we got it independently. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they were married until I just saw them. I saw in the pictures that they were, there was a connection, so I started looking at their addresses and I found they live in the same place. So. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> we also know. And uh, no one told me. <laughs> no, you don't know Raisy from my lab. Yeah, I know Raisy, but you didn't tell me anything. She did? She told, oh. told you. No? <laughs> we tried to keep it a secret, but we thought yeah. there was a leak. <laughs> <laughs> but Raisy was the leak. Okay. Um, That's why you want to say it. Tell us something yeah, about so it. actually, I just want to, I guess, second everything everybody just said. I mean, the financial independence that this fellowship gives you as a student is absolutely amazing. Uh, the possibility to choose a conference and just go there with whenever you want, uh, in, a, in a way that you're not dependent of your PI or anything, it's uh, a wonderful uh, feeling of freedom. So thank you. Wonderful. <coughs> And on the uh, second, uh, second thing about being in Adam's family, it really gives you a really a nice sense of community, of being together and trying to excel together with uh, very good people behind you. And so the fellowship is, is a wonderful thing in these two sense. And so thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, I also tried to think about a way to improve uh, the fellowship. And again, I didn't reach any conclusions. <laughs> uh, but opening it for social sciences is really interesting in that sense. Um, I didn't think about it. Um, and that's it, I guess. 
Right. Just tell us in general what, what your work is on. In general, well, so I'm an immunologist. In five sentences. Wow. Five? <laughs> five? That's okay. Well, we're working on mainly herpes viruses, which are very common in the human population, all kinds of herpes viruses. And we're working on two ways, on the way herpes viruses try to evade immune recognition and the way that they go into latency in our body. And the second part is how our body, uh, how our immune system tries to uh, fight them back and try to eliminate them. So we're working on these two uh, modes of action. One of the, you know, the, the something that's happened all over the world, but especially critical in Israel, is the field of virology. Virology has been neglected to some extent in Israel. It's a very, very important field because many of the infectious diseases, and not only infectious diseases, many diseases today are caused by viruses. So what uh, Daphne is doing is actually very important, very important for her, very important for, for Medina Israel. Well, <laughs> I am encouraged that I am in the right direction. <laughs> Absolutely. Heavy fun. Absolutely. And uh, our last Yoab. is Joab. Joab is also in biology, in neurobiology. And, but he's at the other campus. He's at the Gibat. Yeah, luckily for our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Far, far enough uh, that we meet only me at home. At home. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you work on the olfactory system? I work actually on adult neurogenesis. I work on uh, a naturally occurring phenomena of regeneration of new brain cells in our brain. How it happens naturally in just two restricted regions of the brain. So our brain does regenerate, but in a very restricted manner. We work on one of these regions, which is the olfactory bone. But I can't say that I'm an olfaction person. I work more in adult neurogenesis, about how these neurons uh, develop, how they form connections with other neurons, and uh, how flexible they are, how they're affected by our environment, by our cha the changes in our environment. That's <coughs> what I would say. Uh, <coughs> And about the Adams Fellowship, um, I can say, I mean, I can, yeah, everybody already said everything I wanted to say, maybe except one thing, so I, I will briefly repeat it, that it, it is uh, amazing to be financially independent, and I'll say something that's a bit politically incorrect to say that the PI student relationship is a complex thing, and you can have disagreements about a lot of things, about where the research is going and which conferences to attend, and I think it's it's a good thing to be independent in this respect, that you are, you are supported by something external. And uh, not, not to, I mean, seriously, I have an amazing relationship with my advisor, but I think this is an important thing, to be an independent researcher, in a way, inside the lab. This is what uh, it, it has been for me. And I think the Adam seminars also are uh, a wonderful thing, actually for me as mostly for broadening my horizons, just list, hearing lectures about things that I would never have heard of any other way from, I don't know, nanotechnology to uh, Rambam philosophy. Is, uh, for me, it's, it's really actually exciting to be part of sort of a larger intellectual community. That's the way I see it, so for me it's really enriching my experience. Not the proper scientific experience, but more of sort of the general academic experience, I would say. Fantastic. So thank you. So we're not supporting anybody who's studying Rambam, but we had a, we had a fantastic lecture by Moshe Halbertal, who spoke about it, and it generated a lot, a lot of interest amongst the students. But this is part of this uh, multidisciplinary approach to science, uh, to expose people to different areas, because it stimulates thinking, it stimulates creativity. Being together, one completes the other. Sometimes. And they think back. Right. If they don't fight with each other, then no. <laughs> no room for fighting. <laughs> it's one family. Right.
Gil, would you like to add something? Yeah, uh, my name is Gil Troy. I'm Marcel's son-in-law, but I'm also an American historian, so I'm not worthy. <laughs> I, I, I see the depth of your work and I see the superficiality of my narratives and I, I feel humbled. Um, but I'm uh, an academic and remember enough being a graduate student that I can really appreciate the gift that you've given us today. First of all, the gift of your time. I know how the time crunch uh, can feel and to take out time to come in and meet with us is, is very important. Also, the gift of your insight. And it's interesting hearing um, your assessment of the program because having seen how Marcel created it and, and, and having seen the evolution, the word community that each one of you used was very important to him. The notion from the start that this wasn't a gift for people who were already at the top of their profession, but for people who are exactly what you're talking about, sort of a crossroads, looking for financial independence was very important to him. There was somebody lobbying him to broaden it to social scientists and liberal arts, and uh, he failed. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll be more successful uh, at it, I, I hope. I will, I will certainly take up that, that banner and that crusade and see what we can do. Um, but you're really, I mean, having, having seen him think about this idea and then having seen it come to fruition in so many different ways uh, that you express, it's very, very, very moving. And we're really proud of each and every one of you. And proud, especially, of the two of you who are coming in building in Eretz Israel, and not just Israel, new academic futures, and looking forward to hearing how you build it when you finish your PhDs and return here, because for him that was very, very important. Um, and he heard travel, and he was afraid. He heard postdocs, and he was afraid. And that was actually something where he had to be pushed. Uh, Bernard Shapiro, who was the former president and well, principal of McGill University, was the one who suggested the idea of travel, of this travel site. Because he said it was a small place, it's an intense place, it's got a lot of richness, but you also have to get out. And it was a little bit beyond his comfort zone. And so to hear your feedback is very important. Uh, and finally, I just have to say two other thank yous. First of all, to Chaim Cedar, who's done such an extraordinary job uh, of shepherding this program for the last few years. And you know, every time I open up the newspaper, I read about yet another award. Um, he's getting an honorary <laughs> doctorate of this, this week. Uh, yet another honorary doctorate, I should say. And, and to see the gift of your time and your insight uh, from your extraordinary business career makes uh, a huge difference to us. Thank you. Um, and, and, and to have serious people like you investing in this program shows how important it is and, and helps also build the prestige. And finally, Batsheva, you do everything from soup to nuts uh, with such grace and such talent and such ease, and you really make it uh, so easy to work with you. So really, to da to da to da to da la and to da I think we would like to thank you. Really, uh, the kind of support that you get here, um, there is hardly any bureaucracy because Bacheva really takes care of everything. So it's, it's also wonderful for us. Yeah, and that also is part of the vision. That when we started asking around, there were people who showed us many layers of programs, and we said we wanted simple. And when we came to this place, and first met with Matt Sadok, and we saw that there was simplicity here, and. That was actually also one of the processes, so it's nice to see it sort of working out. I didn't set this as an alarm with something, it just happened. <laughs> hey, Rachelle, would you like to say something? Would you add something? I um, just um, want to express my appreciation to Mr. Adams for giving me the opportunity to, to lead such a program. It was a great experience, and it still is. And I really look forward to his visit every year and uh, wish him great health and to continue at Navis Suite because it, it, your presence is very important to everyone. And um, it makes a difference to me especially, the fact that I can pick up a phone and speak to you and send you an email. And I have Gil here who also contributes fantastically to the program. And, um, and it's, it's great to, to deal with all these young people who are so creative and, uh, and are Israel's future. It's, it's a great privilege, too, and I really want to say thank you for that opportunity. And um, hope we'll continue for one. Everybody is financially independent, but we're all dependent on what you have. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, I am very lucky to have found this. <laughs> I agree. And Bacheva is 
when I call the universities, I speak to her. And I know her telephone number at home and here by heart. <laughs> and I ask her to communicate and to keep me as part of the team. And she does it when she has anything to add to what I know already. And thank you, Batsheva, for being part of the team. It's my pleasure. <laughs> now, I uh, regret to tell you people that this gentleman who was my advisor and my co-formation, I don't understand anything of what you do, but I rely totally on, on him and the committee. And uh, I feel that the whole group is now complete. And I wish I would have at least as advanced individual replacing you <laughs> to understand, to be patient, because I live in world and come from a different, totally different world where I don't know all that. And thank you. Good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for. I just want time. to mention that there are there's someone who was supposed to come, Carmel Rothschild, who's yeah. from the second class. But he got stuck, his flight was delayed, and he couldn't get back in time for this meeting. There are a few of the fellows who are now in the industry in high tech, but they couldn't leave at this hour of the day, so we couldn't have them join us. <coughs> but um, a lot of people are coming back and have found positions in Israel, and it's, it's really, you're contributing very meaningfully to Israel's future, also in the academia and also in, in high tech. I am totally available and you can disturb me, but not after 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I will find the time during the day or the next morning to complete because I know I have a few more people. Right, there are a few more people. And uh, listen, uh, Everyone didn't get up in the morning thinking of me, <laughs> tied up with their activities. And thank you much, Shabbat. You're going to be here for the seminar, right? Next week. You're going to be here for the seminar next, Sunday. next week. Next Sunday. Yeah, I am here. Yeah, I came for the seminar for you. And for and for these people. And for your four grandchildren. <laughs> and also for my family. As an and he is father of four, and today it's the first day of one of them. And she is already a future student of one of the universities. She is now 10 years old. <laughs> But uh, she has a few years to orient herself. No pressure. <laughs> the advice of, of the parents. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.